Okay, guys, so this is um, a little bit wider of an angle than I usually use. So if you get my head, I am sorry. I'm going to do my best to keep my head out of the way. Um, this is, I'm getting ready to put together my 2025 planners and that, and I want um, some hard covers to just store them. Okay. Because I use a Franken planner, I put pieces of each one into one planner, so these sit on the shelf. I got this inspiration from Scrappy Wife, and I saw her do the one video, and I did not, I was not able to see if she um, came back with a how durable they are, but since I'm not using them, these are not going to be intended to match necessarily be out and about um, and using it every day I feel like this is going to be a nice just something nice and pretty to house my unused um, at the moment planner so I have some uh, older happy planner covers that I'm not using I do not remember when these are from but um, they you know They've been around. So I got these at the Dollar Tree and these are um, just wallpaper peel and stick. She used some, um, the smaller, like, I don't know, maybe it was the tile, like the tile paper, but I figured this is gonna be nice enough. And so I got, this is one and I got it two pieces because if I were to go sideways, I could use Let's see, let me get it lined up. So you can technically use one sheet per side with two planner covers, but since it's directional and I knew it was gonna matter to me, um, I got two of each, they're $1.25 a piece and it's a small price to pay uh, to do that. So I got this for the outside and that for the inside of this one. Okay, super pretty. I love these. I think they're called cherry blossoms. And then I got these super cute, really light um, butterfly and floral. And then I got just a basic wood uh, grain look. So I'm going to put you on fast forward and we're going to see how this goes. I will tell you, I started out by lining all of my planner covers up and I wiped them down really good with um, rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. So that's, you know, I just want to make sure any extra dirt and whatnot was gone. So we're going to put this all over here and I'm going to get moving on this and I will show you how it goes. So I went ahead and finished these off camera because I didn't want to take too long filming. Uh, a couple of things. I suggest a crocodile. Um, and I suggest if you use a crocodile that you clean it out after punching each side because the stickers and that can get kind of stuck in there and gum it up and makes it harder to continue to do them. You can use a craft knife or a pair of scissors, but I highly suggest a craft knife. If you don't have a crocodile, you can do it with a craft knife and scissors. I would cut around the outside with the scissors or a straight edge. If you have one like this, you can do it on with a 
craft knife. But to do these holes, I would use a craft knife. Um, and then these, I just say, I don't, I got these at the, I think they come at, like we have a hybrid store. It's a family dollar tree. Um, it's family dollar and dollar tree. I think these are at, or these were at the dollar tree portion of it. Um, and it's just a cutting mat in the craft section. And I picked up four of them because we use them for everything. So I also went ahead and used a, um, scraper or a press from my uh, Cricut and my Silhouette for my vinyl work because um, it just, I wanted to make sure I got it down really, really well. So I'll show you what I got and then um, we'll move on and I will get uh, my planners punched and um, get it all together. So this is the uh, Japanese cherry blossoms, I think. And I put these on the inside. You don't have to do an inside and an outside, but I did. Um, I just thought it was very nice looking and a very complimentary and contrasting. That's the back of that, that one. And then this one I think is my favorite. And I don't know if I can find this again. So if I can, I might, um, cause I bought these at two separate times. Um, but this one's so pretty. I love how it came out. So this is the butterfly one. And on the inside, I just used a wood grain. And then you have the white butterfly with the blue background. So let me get these all together and hole punched. Um, for my planners because I got most of them printed out and they need to go on discs so they don't get ruined just floating around the office. Okay so I did get my budget book planner and my dashboard planner printed out. You can get these on Etsy and I will link the uh, link below. Um, you can get these in printable. I am not offering shipping right now. Um, I just do not have that in me. But these are fairly simple, and I will give you a flip through after we're done putting these together. Um, this is a printer setting error. So anything you see on this planner that might be a little off is just because of the printer error. And my printer died. Like, it died. It's not coming back. And I'm waiting for a new printer that's being shipped so I can finish printing out everything. Um, so let me get these punched and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got them all punched. Oops, sorry about that. And I have these covers here. I have picked out some really, really pretty uh, complimentary rings to go with them, discs, rings. So for the Japanese cherry blossom, I'm going to have those. And I think, I don't know, see with this, look how pretty that is. It just looks like it's going to complement really, really well. Um, my budget book stays together, so I need to figure out, I think I'm going to use the cherry blossoms for that one. So I'm going to get these put together now and then we'll do a walkthrough. Try one at a time here. There we go. Maybe I can do two. There we go. These are the covers that I just showed you that I covered. Um, oh, am I going to be, oh, I don't know. I need to go get another one. Either that or I lost it on the table somewhere. Oh boy. Is it under here? No. Under there? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I had nine. I know I had nine. 
Okay, so let me put these on and then I might have to go dig in my jar again to see if I've got um, another one or where, maybe I put it back by accident when I was cleaning up. See how cute that's gonna look? Okay, not on the floor. All right, give me one second. Okay, so I found it in the jar. I think I just put it back in when I scooped up all the others. I just keep my extra rings in uh, mason jars. So this is going to be for my planner. Um, set up here. Let's see if I can get these in one month at a time. So I will tell you, I mean, there's honestly, I mean, nothing like super spectacular. It's not like I made, you know, a whole new concept. Um, but I will tell you, I do really like how they laid out. And I like being able to print my own. Um, oops, there we go. So I printed the my daily planner, okay, this is what I consider my catch-all, you know, I printed it on um, 30 pound cardstock, 30, 32 pound cardstock, and then for the <clears throat> budget planner, I printed it on 24 because I couldn't find the 28. Last year and previous years, I had been printing them out on 28 pound, 28 26 or 28 pound cardstock, but I couldn't find it. So I went with the 24, um, just because that's what I could find. Um, these are going to be more of your minimalist kind of layouts and spreads. As you can see, like this is literally the only decor on my, um, planner so it's going to just be very minimal and very versatile you can use these for your catch-alls you can use these for work you know they're clean enough to be professional um, and not too vibrant or cutesy or you know anything you can do that with your stickers and that's what I figured I would do with mine um, and I will show you here when I get this in what all comes with. Let's see. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. Now you're going to notice I don't have dividers. And this year, I don't want them. Um, I am going to, especially in my, uh, what am I going to call my, my holding discs. I don't want dividers in here. Um, I have found the way that I separate things in my Franken planner that um, I don't, it's just more tabs than I need. Um, I do use them, but I figure I can use them in uh, the way that I'm going to need them with the other tabs that I have. And I will show you more of that when it comes to putting together my Franken planner for the year. So this is the front and it just says 2025 dashboard planner. Okay. Let me see where. Okay. I'm going to make sure you are zoomed in enough. I think that should be good. If not, I will fix it when I edit. So in this planner, and by the way, 30 pound or 32 pound paper, game changer. It just is so butter soft. And I will tell you, some of this is printed a little wonky because my printer decided to go on the fritz and completely die yesterday. So it's just a printer feeding error. 
that made some of this a little wonky and I'm it's it's livable so I'm just gonna go with it so when you open it up you're gonna have your 2025 calendar then I have a blank perpetual calendar for all the whole year okay this you can do whatever you want with this is you can use it for sports schedules dinner planning um you know anything you want weather whatever and you can just number them down you can put stickers to number them down or you can just write it in but that's pretty much how this is going to be then you flip it over and you have what i call or i think it's bullet journal term probably is a future log started using a future log when I bullet journaled and I'm telling you, I can't live without it. Just the way this functions, it helps my brain so much. So when you are, if you have your Franken planner and you have this in, you can just take your planner out. You don't have the rest of your month set up. You have the calendar quick reference and say it's December and you are looking at appointments for March. You're going to look and go, okay, I don't have anything and you mark down the day, and then you mark down what or who and the time. So that way you've got it all here. And when you go to set up your month, you refer back to this and put everything on your monthly or into your weekly. This has helped tremendously. So you have the whole year that way, okay? And then you have a blank note page and another blank note page. Then you start your January and all of these are gonna be set up the same. So you have your January, it's got very minimal decor. Sunday start, you have your uh, notes and lines and I put this down for a focus box because I always have something each month. I always have something each month that I wanna focus on. Um, usually a highlight a goal, something that needs attention. Um, that way I can mark it down there. Or if I don't have anything that month, I can put it, um, put a sticker there and just have a spot for a sticker. So I will tell you, this is going to come in dated for 2025 or undated. And it's, the undated is going to be a smaller file and you won't have the future log and I can't remember you should have the perpetual but you're not going to have you know like everything um, just because it's not going to apply so have the calendar and then this is what your weeklies look like so Monday start on your weekly don't come at me I like the way the happy planner does down here for Saturday and Sunday I like my weekend being together when I'm planning And I'm a creature of habit. So we just went with the Monday start. I have a large box up here and no prompts here. So you can use this for um, notes. You can, if you're using it for work, you can say, you know, your major meeting for the week and make some notes or bullet points on it, whatever. On the left, I have a small task to do list, bullet points. And then I have top three priorities. I've left a large portion of it blank with a light dot grid because it allows for a lot more flexibility. You can put your weekly meal plan, you can put your work schedule, you can put meeting, you know, you can make notes, you can do whatever works for you. Every month is like that. And in the back, let me see. Okay, so in the back, this is December, January, so I did put this week in because sometimes you just can't get over to a new week or a new uh, planner. <laughs> so you've got one, two uh, note, page, note pages in the back and your back cover. I will tell you, I think I forgot. Um, so at the end of each month, you have a blank lined paper. Uh, you can either 
have this apply like a, a summary of notes or whatever for like January or because it's facing, you can use it as like a currently page for the next month. So that's what I've done for my uh, dashboard planner. Let me get this um, budget planner in here and I will show you what is going on with that. So this one was kind of a simplification. Um, I just needed something to simplify each month and I will show you more uh, detail in a uh, different video. I will do a setup for it so you can see how I'm using it. And you're going to see a lot of expense trackers. Um, just because that's the way I'm growing them, I guess. Um, Let's see. Tried a lot of different systems and I did find a method that worked and I've used it for many years, several, several, about four or five. And it worked out really, really well. But right now, what I am needing is more simplification. And um, I don't need a lot of uh, extra pages in that. And so. There we go. This was the whole premise behind this is I wanted something more, more simplified than what I had. So again, minimal decor. Okay. I guess this is the era I'm in minimal decor <laughs> and just as 2025 budget, you open it up to lined pages, use them for notes for the year, use them for subscriptions, use them for goals, Use them for notes or projects that you have and intend to have. Whatever works for you. I left that for general use. Then I have two pages of budget categories. So this is one budget category. You're going to write your budget category and then define what's there. And I did two. Um, so you've got what, 24? 24 budget categories. Even if you cross one out and redefine it, you still have enough space to do so. And again, this is on 24 pound paper. So you're going to see some of the bleed through or not bleed through, but the shadow. <clears throat> this is a yearly spending summary and there's notes down here. You can review your expenses throughout the year and make notes on what you want to do to change or your goals for changing for the next year. Then there's a bill tracker. This is for um, monthly bills and maybe quarterly bills, things like that. This is what I'm going to use for annual bills, things that um, happen once a year or maybe biannual. Uh, we'll have to see. Now this, you're looking at this going, what on earth is this? This is intended to use this direction. This has helped me tremendously. This I used to track my electric for the year. We are on budget billing. And so I put the months down here and I put the cost here in increments of like 25 or $50. And every month I would get my bill, look at the actual and I would graph it, okay? I brought my bill down by $40 a month this year. So you can label it, use it however you want, because on the back, I'm going to label my electric. And then every month I'm going to write the month. I'm going to write the actual and figure the difference between the budget amount that I've paid and the actual amount. Um, like what I've done higher or lower. Let me show you this year. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. 
So this is this year's. So you can see, I put a line where our budget billing was. Um, it was at 260 a month for this year. And our months, our year for our electric goes from October to September, which is why it's dated this way. So you see, I put the months down here and I put the cost up here. Thanking God that it didn't go 300 because it's bad enough. Um, we have a small farm and everything. So, and we are primarily electric use with very few propane items. So that's why our electric bill is so much higher than what you would see. Now, did I finish? No, I need to catch this up. But on the other side, let me make sure. Um, this is what I did. I just roughly did this. And this is why I have this here. It's just going to make it a whole lot easier. Um, so I wrote the month and I wrote the actual and I wrote an arrow up or down how much it was. And so you see how many down arrows because I saw it and I kept at it because I saw that we were spending under and I thought, okay, we did great this month. What can we keep doing or what can we add to lower our uh, electric bill. And so that's why I did that one. So every month you're going to have a quote on the cover page. Um, so there's a quote and I put who and where I found it at. Then you're going to have a month to lay out any bills, expenses, um, however you want to do it. And again, this is just my dated monthly calendar view with the notes lines over here and a focus box. So right here is where you can put all your income, you list all your bills, and there's some notes to wrap around. There's your variables and your debt and your sinking funds and savings. And this is where you have your summary, your total income, you're going to add everything up. You're going to do your total expenses, which um, is right here for your bills. You're going to put the variables down here, your total savings which is this one, and then your total debt, and add that up. And there's, again, more notes over here. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and six expense trackers per month. Um, I think I just did it that way so that you had more than enough. So the great thing about a download is that you don't have to print everything that's in there. Um, just pick and choose what works for you. So these are the expense trackers and then a line page for notes. So you can either take this as a review for the month that you just finished, or you can again, put it towards the following month. So um, there's a quote by Benjamin Franklin, one by Ronald Reagan, One by Winston Churchill. Oop. Come on now. Uh, one by Francis Bacon. One by Benjamin Franklin. Abraham Lincoln. Winston Churchill. Robert Kiyosaki, Edmund Burke, and these are meant to keep you motivated in the next month. Um, they kind of sometimes give you food for thought. Um, there's a Japanese proverb, and then again, Aesop, okay? So, at the end of the year, you have two blank pages to reflect on the month, maybe reflect on the year, maybe you're gonna put like a Christmas shopping list or whatever it is there, okay? And then again, if you're not using um, like a hard happy planner or a hard uh, cover, you can print these out the front and back on heavy, heavy, heavy cardstock and that is fine. Um, that will work fine enough. So we have the budget, 
and the dashboard planner. These are coming dated and undated uh, up on Etsy, and there will be a link down below. And I hope this um, helped you maybe make decisions and give you food for thought of what you want in your <clears throat> excuse me, what you want in your planners for the next year. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below or uh, shoot me a message and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, it's been extremely busy. <laughs> so uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for stopping by.